Hello from the Turkish Japanese family. Hello. Merhaba, ben Bilge. Konnichiwa, Tomo desu. Today we're going to talk about how we speak English so well. We got these questions from many of you and we decided to answer. So, Tomo, maybe you should start telling us how did you learn English? For me, the start was quite early because my mom was teaching English to the local neighborhood kids. She learned English by herself on her own, so that itself is quite an achievement. So then she decided that we learn uh, as early as possible. So I think we started seven, eight years old in elementary school. Yeah, today your mom is uh, 75 years old. She's learning German at the moment. Yeah, she teaches Japanese uh, to foreigners. After I came to here to Switzerland, she <laughs> it became her hobby to learn German. So yeah, I had the early start, which helped a lot, I think, uh, to train my ears mainly. Um, but obviously, being in Japan, uh, the environment is nowhere for English, so there's no way to submerge ourselves. Yeah, I think what helped also was that there is a U.S. naval base in my hometown, so we had interaction with American people, and uh, they would come to our house, uh, have dinner or something, or we play with their kids. I think again it sets the early the basis uh, for, for learning this language. Um, and then of course there was a US naval base so there was radio flying around. And tune in to listen to the American football game or just listening to the radio and, and it, it was playing in our room, my, me and my brother uh, listened to it. It could be music, it could be anything. And also pronunciation, it's all about mimic, mimicking uh, what you hear. So ear got trained, I think it helped me a lot to later on catch on with uh, the speaking side. And what was your turn of points? How did you become such a good English speaker? Because we know Japan <laughs> is not really a country that speaks the English language I so well. I, yeah, I spent one year in high school in the US. Uh, as an exchange and that's the ultimate submersion because you're diving straight into the American high school um, everybody's talking in English obviously and there was no way with Japanese so initially it was a struggle because you cannot keep up with the speed of sp speech but then one day I think three months later it just clicked speaking obviously improves because you hear then you just repeat what they say or how they say it when they say it um, so that, for me, was the best way to learn uh, learn this language. Pronunciation-wise, as you can hear, I'm more American trained. So after finishing high school, I went to the university in the U.S. So I ended up spending seven years in academia in the U.S. So obviously that was consolidating the language skill uh, technically and professionally. So. And That's... since then, I never look back. <laughs> I feel more comfortable now with English than Japanese, so that says quite a lot. You even teach me sometimes, correct me in English. <laughs> yeah, municipality and municipality. <laughs> My story is totally different because I never lived in an English speaking country. I visited English speaking countries, however, never lived in one. So. I didn't have this submerging experience and what happened to me is that I learned English very early in life. Uh, I went to the Anatolian high school in Turkey, that's something, a concept that has been there before, I don't know if it's still there, where the school instruction language was fully in English and that I started at 12 years old. I also had one year of preparation class only in English. And then uh, in the university, I joined uh, Bilgi University studying computer science in English as well. I also had one year prep class there. But what really matters, I think, is talking, speaking English. And that really came to me when I was around 18 years old. I was working at the um, student organization called ISEC. And while I was working there, I was responsible for foreign students who come to stay in Turkey. I was responsible for their activities, accommodation, so I was always in touch with them, taking them out. That made it for me um, using English on a daily basis uh, and talking it out and really trying to understand their problems. That was a wonderful experience 
for me to improve my English. And when I was looking for my own internship opportunity, I was accepted by a global American company in Germany. That's uh, when I really realized my English is really good, that I could go through interviews and be accepted by a company where I can use my English in a business environment. Since then, that's my life's reality. I, uh, I speak English in my daily life, I also speak some German, but, but my main business language is English. Then, my friends and my husband, also we speak in English on a, on a daily basis, so this is our life's reality. And if you're curious to know what Kai speaks on a daily basis, it's totally different than ours. He doesn't actually speak that much English, even though he hears from us. Uh, we had one video about that, which you will place it here. If you want, you can watch that video to know how Kai is dealing with six languages. So here are our tips for you, how you can learn English easily. Easily. <laughs> <laughs> it's never easy. Number one. Submerge yourself into an English environment. Okay, maybe you cannot go to UK or US, but what you can do is find friends that the only common language is English. <laughs> so you get to practice English because number one rule of a learning language is talking. Number two, uh, train your ears, essentially just to make English um, natural to you. Yeah, watch TV, for example, in English with subtitle or even in your own language uh, translation. Yeah, so it can be like TV or be YouTube, podcasts, uh, radio. You can now listen to any radio. radio. <laughs> Who listens to radio? No, you can listen to radio from many countries. You can also watch our YouTube videos because they are in English and mostly in English and we have subtitles. You can also check out the app called Skipdo to learn vocabulary from your favorite TV series. This is a company from a friend of mine and you can check it out. Number three, <laughs> expose yourself to the language you're learning by reading, it could be even uh, magazines, news, for example, you know what's going on, just try to read it in, in, in English. You can start obviously from children's books. As I read Kai's uh, books, I feel like I'm learning myself especially the complexity of German with the articles and things. Number four, change your phones or PCs language settings to English. This will help you to grasp some terminology and make you feel comfortable using that terminology later on. As far as I can remember myself, I always had my language settings in English. Number five, travel, if you can. This really gives you confidence to speak the language in other countries, especially if it's a country that the language is not native in English, you can be even more comfortable speaking it out because nobody's going to judge you. So go out there, try your English and speak it out. That's the best way to learn. Yeah, at the end of the day, fear of mistake is the biggest enemy because it stops you from saying things or trying things. So don't be embarrassed if you make a mistake. Um, or if you think you're going to make a mistake, just go just do and it. say it, <laughs> like you do, actually. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's my problem, and I tell myself to, to just spit it out. Well, what is the worst can happen if you make a mistake, right? Somebody will correct you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a game. Keep on going, keep learning, and even write in comments in English to us if that makes you feel more comfortable. Thanks for watching and support us by subscribing to our channel. And if you don't want to miss our videos, hit the ring bell. So whenever we have a new video, you will get a notification. Thank See you. you in the next video. Bye. Bye.